Thank you very much. Um, would like first of all to thank Sam for this uh, very nice event. Very impressive audience. Uh, together with Matthew, we were expecting something much smaller, cosier, and uh, all of a sudden we see uh, half of the diplomatic group here. So it makes our lives a bit uh, uh, difficult. Uh, my apologies also for, uh, uh, on behalf of Ambassador Mord, unfortunately, our ambassador, uh, as we speak, in fact, should be uh, on the way to the presidential palace with Commissioner Han, because we have uh, Commissioner Han, who is responsible for Eastern Partnership, uh, among other things, and neighborhood policy, uh, visiting uh, Baku today. Uh, therefore, she had to um, be with, to accompany him, and I have uh, been instructed to, uh, to have the pleasure of um, addressing you today. Um, I am in a competitive disadvantage uh, uh, as a, uh, compared to my speakers, uh, of distinguished speakers of the panel, because um, I do represent a structure, uh, and I see many ambassadors of EU member states that are uh, there to control me, uh, whereas they represent their institutes, so they're much freer. Um, I remember uh, two weeks ago, uh, former uh, European Commission President uh, José Manuel Barroso in a speech, he said, uh, my degree of sincerity grows by the day because uh, he left uh, the European Commission and he is uh, not representing Portugal, nor, nor Portugal, neither the European Commission. Uh, I am unfortunately not in this position. Uh, therefore, um, uh, I would like uh, to uh, share some thoughts because obviously in uh, the remaining 10 minutes it's impossible to, to tell you about the EU policy in South Caucasus. Just some thoughts. First of all, I think an interesting snapshot of uh, what happens uh, the last days. So today, as I said, Commissioner Han is visiting Baku. He will have meetings with uh, hopefully the President, Foreign Minister, uh, Minister of Economy, Port Baku, Civil Society. Um, yesterday we had uh, uh, a discussion, a debate at the European Parliament and the adoption of a resolution on uh, human rights. Uh, we were uh, most of the time live, uh, checking live what the debate is about and what the result of the resolution uh, debate is. So um, uh, this shows also that uh, this is uh, the European Parliament, which is another institution, has an influence on our uh, bilateral relations. Um, on Tuesday, last Tuesday and Wednesday, we had uh, the second round of uh, talks on the new EU-Azerbaijan uh, agreement. Uh, uh, and they uh, concluded also with uh, a meeting between uh, our chief negotiator, Luc de Vigne, and uh, uh, Foreign Minister Mamadiarov. Um, uh, last week, we had a very large EU business forum on June 8th with the participation of more than 300 EU companies, uh, I think uh, reflecting the big interest of European companies in this country, in investing and operating in this country. And uh, if I, I can go on, uh, the end of May we had a visit of uh, MEPs, members of European Parliament, that visited uh, Baku also. They had uh, uh, very uh, high-level meetings, including with the President. So. This basically reflects um, a new climate, I think, in uh, uh, the relations between the European Union and Azerbaijan. Um, that uh, I think uh, uh, in this framework, I think uh, Sam plays a very important role. In fact, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Gulshan in Brussels in one of these uh, uh, debates about South Caucasus and Azerbaijan. I can see that these debates are, uh, have multiplied uh, uh, these years. Uh, we have um, uh, much more interest uh, in the European Union about what is happening in the, in the South Caucasus, and uh, I think the debates become more and more uh, interesting. Um, so, what I wanted basically to say is that the European Union is has a very difficult role reconciling two contradictory elements. First is, obviously, uh, the need for 
um, uh, to, of respect of the secular uh, model of government in this country that we appreciate and value a lot. Uh, secularism in this part of the world is extremely important for the European Union, uh, also as a paradigm for the Muslim world. I think uh, Azerbaijan can play a very important role and the model also of intercultural dialogue, respect for uh, um, different ethnic uh, and religious groups. This is, I think, very important. It is also very important uh, to highlight uh, the need for uh, political stability. It, it, as a matter of fact, it was uh, interesting to see during the business forum, EU-Azerbaijan business forum, that uh, when we tried to uh, see what would be the important positive and negative elements of the business climate here, um, most uh, of uh, uh, the participants in this uh, forum highlighted political uh, stability as one of the most positive uh, issues. Therefore, this is something that uh, is important for our businesses and is important for the European Union. It is also important, obviously, to um, strengthen uh, even more our uh, strategic partnership in energy. This is, uh, I don't need to say anything more, you are very much aware of that. Um, but uh, this is also some, uh, uh, an important element, obviously. At the same time, we have to reconcile all this with issues like um, our values, uh, common values, in fact, and uh, common principles, uh, uh, the respect for human rights, the freedoms, the rule of law, independence of judiciary, and so on. Um, and you have a taste of this in uh, uh, yesterday's uh, resolution of the European Parliament. Um, what I can say about the relationship and why I'm optimistic about bi our bilateral relationship is uh, basically three things. First thing is that I think if you compare um, the reaction or the impact of the S September 2015 resolution of the European Parliament in yesterday's uh, resolution, um, you can see that, first of all, the resolution, even though it is an independent structure, it's an independent institution, it's the European Parliament, not the executive, uh, not the Foreign Service, let's say, uh, EAS or European Commission, you can see that the resolution is much more carefully crafted and drafted. Uh, secondly, you can see that, uh, for the time being at least, and let's hope, inshallah, that this goes on, uh, the reaction uh, of Azerbaijan is, uh, um, let's say, within certain um, completely acceptable uh, framework. Uh, it is not emotional, as it was in September 2015, when uh, basically we uh, suspended uh, many uh, cooperation structures that we had established. Why is this? I think that this is due to the fact that we know each other much better now uh, and we value what unites us uh, much more. I think this is an element that we have to take into account. Second, I think, element is that the European Union has understood that we need to differentiate among our partners in Eastern Partnership. This, for instance, was not very clear uh, some years ago, where we put all Eastern Partnership members in the same basket. Now, I think it is not the case. We are uh, very clear that uh, uh, we have uh, different partners and our relationship will depend on the level of ambition that we want to have in our relationship with these individual partners. Um, to make, uh, to illustrate this, I can tell you that the draft text of the new agreement, uh, EU-Azerbaijan, that we are discussing now, uh, the first draft was drafted by the Azerbaijani side. And this is unique. This is the first time that we negotiate an agreement uh, uh, where the first text comes from our partner and not the European Union. This shows also, I think, respect for uh, uh, Azerbaijan. 
Third issue that I think is important is that um, our uh, bilateral relationship is not monopolized by energy cooperation and uh, uh, the settlement of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh issue. Uh, this uh, uh, was the case, I think, in the past, but now I think uh, without obviously um, um, how should I say, neglecting uh, our role in uh, supporting the settlement of Nagorno-Karabakh, this issue is not, uh, is not, uh, cannot take um, our bilateral relation as a hostage. And I think this is very important. This is very important. Um, you do uh, probably remember there was, uh, during the Second World War, um, uh, or uh, shortly after, um, a UK foreign minister um, talked to his uh, um, envoy, ambassador in Palestine, and uh, he, told me, he told him, you know, I hear many bad things about you from uh, Palestinians and Israelis. And obviously the ambassador was in a very defensive mood, and he said, uh, yes, but, and the foreign minister went on and said, if I stop hearing criticism from both sides, you're fired. Why? Because in these cases, you need to have distances in order to be productive and to be um, helpful at the important moment. Uh, therefore, I think this is uh, uh, an important thing also to take into account. Last but not least, I wanted still to say a, a few words about the EU itself. I am um, a typical uh, representative of the first Erasmus University Exchange generation. I was among the first students benefiting from Erasmus that now is very widely known, where there are uh, more than 9 million, I think, uh, students that uh, have used this program. I was among the first, and even the, the program was not very clear then. They had many problems, administrative problems. I remember I received my scholarship when I already finished my studies. Um, so uh, that was the different times. I am one of the first uh, to uh, cross from Spain to uh, Gibraltar in 1986 when Spain joined the European Union and finally opened the border with Gibraltar. Um, so, and in many, many areas, the European Union has become part of our lives. And sometimes we forget and we take for granted things that have taken place in Europe. Not to say, of course, the yesterday's good news that uh, you probably know that uh, uh, roaming charges within the European Union have been uh, abolished. So uh, this is also good news. So whether we want it or not, the European Union has made our lives much easier. Uh, it is very easy to criticize. Again, quoting uh, Jose Manuel Barroso, it is very easy to Europeanize the problems and nationalize the successes. And this unfortunately has been happening uh, a lot in Europe. Um, but I think uh, uh, Europe is here and Europe is back. We have managed uh, to not to completely solve, but I think the worst is behind us in at least three issues that were critical for us the Euro crisis, the refugee crisis, and the populism. Um, I think uh, I, we are in much, much better position in all three issues. I'm not saying that we have solved completely the problems, but I, to a large extent, I think we are, uh, the worst is uh, behind. And on the fourth issue that is also very critical, the Brexit, I have to say that it is very impressive to have such a unified position on Brexit. It is very impressive. So uh, just to make sure that you understand the Europe, uh, European Union is here to stay and to be a um, uh, reliable and long-term partner of Azerbaijan uh, within this region. Thank you very much.